All right, guys, welcome back to another episode. Well, I guess tutorial, but um, yeah, so we got the typing text uh, finally out. So basically when I place down the block, what it's doing is it's just assigning an MBT variable to the block itself, basically saying, okay, print out this text. And then we run some script to actually get the text. So if we right click on it, uh, I have just a simple um, inventory set up. So it basically go ahead and types the text and it will kind of loop over and do that same typing thing again and again. So basically you can customize it however you want, but the function is to actually get the text to type and that's basically what it's doing. Uh, you could easily work this into a GUI screen and uh, add, you know, better uh, visual effects and stuff like that, but this is basically how it works. All right, so that's literally the system. If we right click on it again, it resets the um, the typing part. So let's go ahead and go into M Creator. So in M Creator, what we have is three procedures and then we have one block, which is basically what we're running the uh, GUI from. And then we have the screen itself. So uh, that's basically the inventory that we're going to be working with. So I'm gonna cover the inventory first and explain some stuff. So we're running it from a entity MBT variable. So basically what we've done is we're just getting a variable name called display text. So this is the variable that we're gonna be passing over to the player. Uh, reason for that, if we try to get a display text from a block or something else, it's not going to properly display. Uh, for some reason, block data doesn't show on the client side anymore with inventories for some reason. Um, so you have to pass it over to the player. So that's what the N or E NBT stands for is, is entity, um, basically NBT. So that's that option. You could also use um, global variables. You could run it on client side as well and you could run it, but it has to be on the player side in order for it to actually update. Um, there is a procedure down here, which is going to basically get the display name, I think. Let me just quickly go over this. Um, text display, so this is basically the um, main procedure for actually running the script. So what we're doing is we're going to use text, de text delay to basically uh, delay how long the um, the characters take to type. So basically what this is set to is if it's greater than equal to or greater than five, then what we're doing is we're going to do character count. If character count is less than, um, and then what we're getting is the length of the string. So what we're looking for is a MBT that is saved to the player, which is called my full text. And we're getting the total character count for that particular thing. So once we've done that, what we can do is we can go ahead and we can uh, increase the character count. So if it is less than the total length of how many characters there are, then what we're going to do is increase the character count by one. Uh, this allows, this is basically functions as the um, character counting part where it will count up. So again, character count, if it's set to zero, which it will reset after it reaches the full amount of the character count or character length, I, it will start counting up again. So that's basically how that works. If you want it to run only once, then you can basically disable the um, actual uh, reset part, which is right down here with the else statement. You just remove the else statement and delete this block. Uh, the other thing what we're doing is we're basically assigning a um, MBT to the player, which is called display text. And what we're using is a substring. You have to be really careful with the substrings because if it's not set up properly uh, for if like it goes over the character count and stuff like that, then it will start giving you errors. Uh, but uh, the way that it's set up, it's it works just fine, as you can see. So basically what we're doing 
is we're getting the substring text of my full text, which is again the one that we're working with uh, for the length. And then what we're doing is from position. So position would be zero, which is the starting position for the characters. And then to position, which is where we want our uh, character count. Now again, the character count only goes to the maximum length of the um, actual text that we want to display. Now the reason for that is because if it goes over that, then this will actually crash the game. We don't want that. Well, it, I don't know if it will crash the game. I can't remember if it does or not, but it will it will definitely have some issues. So once we've done that, what we do is we reset the uh, text display or text to so it resets to zero. So once it resets to zero, uh, this cycle will re, re um, do itself. And again, if this value is not equal to or greater than five, so basically five, then what it will do is it will count the text display or text de delay up by one. So basically it'll get the delay text delay and then increase that value by one each time that it cycles through. And this is run through um, where is it? The inventory um, while GOI is open. So we need to run it from that particular procedure trigger. And then we can basically get that. Now there is a block when added. This is basically what we're doing is we're applying the MBT to the block and adding some text. So it will display, as you can see, this is the text that we used in the um, tutorial for the example. And we're just setting that to an MBT for the block. You can get it from an entity, you can get it for anything, but you will need something to interact with the player. Uh, that's where the uh, block on right clicked comes in. We're passing it over from the right clicked event. So basically uh, applying my full text from the MBT my full text. For the block so and then what we're doing is we're just resetting the character count which resets the whole system so it resets the um, starting position for the actual text uh, so this happens when we right click on the block again a lot of these uh, procedures are irrelevant at the moment you don't really need to know about it but what we're doing is we're, we have signed the GUI for that particular uh, for the block right here we have enabled MBT so we can actually use it and we have checked the box for uh, on bound GUI on right click. Uh, so open, pardon me, open bound GUI on right click. So basically it's going to open up the screen. Uh, trigger wise, these are the two triggers that we have set up is the right click one, uh, which is that one right there. And then we have the block added, which is this one right here. So it's really that simple. Um, took me a little while to figure out how I did it last time. I, it was a older uh, tutorial. Well, it wasn't really an older tutorial. I didn't really do a tutorial. This is the first one, but I showcased some work for something that I was working on on automations, and there's uh, quite a few people that wanted a tutorial done for it. So um, I thought I would try to figure out how I put the thing together without actually going into the workspace. But um, yeah, it, it's pretty straightforward. It works efficiently and stuff like that. So it should be cross compatible with, with uh, most versions. So you should be able to do it with uh, older versions of AMP creators. Well, at least until you run out of the blocks that are required for running the script. So hopefully you guys found this helpful. If you're new to my channel, don't forget to subscribe um, like the video, comment down below, and I will see you guys next time and peace out.